Hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Thanks for watching. Today we wanted to take a quick look at an exposed Model Y with front and rear Giga castings. So very unique vehicle, and only until recently um, have you seen this front Giga casting on a Model Y. This one's hit pretty hard in the side, and so we've got some pretty intensive repairs about to happen. But as we've removed the unicide from the vehicle, it's a great chance to look at how this car is constructed. So we can start right up here and take a look. This is the front Giga casting. And uh, if we look closely, we can see that there's some bolts in here uh, up through. This entire front of this vehicle is one piece of cast alloy, aluminum alloy. And so it replaces hundreds of individual components inside of the prior model, which were welded together. So Tesla is really a leader and an innovator in Giga castings. And this is one of the first models that has full front and rear giga castings. It seems that the rest of the automotive industry is really trying to catch up to this idea and figure it out. There's a big concern about repairability in giga castings. It makes sense that there would be concerns around it, but much like sort of charging your electric vehicle versus going to the gas station, there's some, it's really not an apples to apples comparison. There's a few areas in a giga casting which you can make some repairs um, if it maybe has a crack, but essentially, if you're going to need to repair this, you're probably going to need to replace it. That would be horrifying on an internal combustion engine vehicle that has welded assemblies. But the truth is, if you know what to do and you know how these are built, it's really not that bad. But again, if you're thinking in the old terms, it's going to be frightening as hell, frankly, to, to do. So here's a front giga casting assembly that we can see exposed. We'll go back a little bit and I'll point out a few other things. What we're looking at here is the unicide removed from this Model Y. They call it a unicide, one piece. So there's one piece of uh, mild steel that covers the entire side of this vehicle, including the quarter panel. Obviously, the doors then attach here to what they would call the B pillar and the A pillar. With the unicide exposed, you can see a piece of ultra high strength steel. So we had mentioned prior in other videos that um, there's seven or eight metals in some of these vehicles, everything from mild steel, cast aluminum, ultra high strength steel, high strength steel, 4,000 series aluminum, 5,000 series aluminum. Here we can see many of those materials and sort of how they're assembled. So this component here is ultra high strength steel. What that means is you're not going to move that. Underneath here, we can't see there's a beam it's a, and it's a piece of extruded aluminum which really has incredible strength for side impact. And one of the reasons that the safety rating on Tesla's is, is five star. So incredibly strong. If we go back, we're still looking at ultra high strength steel. Um, but now we start to move into aluminum. So here we're transitioning from ultra high strength steel to either 4,000 or 5,000 series aluminum. I'm not sure in this case, but if you come in and take a look, we can see self piercing rivets here. So you can't weld uh, steel to aluminum, so therefore it's riveted. So here's where we start to see a transition. Uh, also, there's a transition up here, but for a different reason. We'll come across and take a look. Uh, now we're into aluminum, 4,000 and 5,000 series aluminum. And what you'll notice is a couple of things. This purple is structural adhesive. Um, and if you notice, it's kind of interesting. You have structural adhesive here. You can see underneath of this component where the structural adhesive from the factory is creeping out. And if we look up where the quarter glass is installed, there's structural adhesive applied here. If we come up to the roof rail, you'll see here that same purple structural adhesive is applied here. Now, if we come on back to this quarter panel and take a look, another interesting thing. You can see four or five different types of foam. So if we look here, there's a foam dam that's inside of this lock panel here. Foam dams are either used to keep vapors out or to keep sound down or to assist in uh, NVH issues, noise, vibration, and handling to keep the car quiet. But here's a very specific closed cell, semi-rigid foam that's used to create a dam in here. I'm gonna point this out just so that you understand when it comes to repairing one of these vehicles, there's a lot going on here and you better make sure that you're not using just one material. You understand which materials need to be used and they're doing it properly. So 
if you're having your vehicle fixed, it's critical that you, you take it to a shop that understands this mixed metal construction very well uh, and how to get through it. So closed cell rigid foam dam here. If we come up, you can see this is more of an NVH foam. It is, uh, it is an open cell foam. And if you watch here, it's very spongy, very soft. Uh, this is primarily for noise uh, handling and vibration issues, but it's here and it, it runs down the top of what they would call the A pillar of the vehicle. You can see it in some very specific places in the car. So when repairing this car, you really should return them to the same condition. If we come back here, you'll see another example of some closed cell semi-rigid foam inside here. Again, this is for either vapor, which you're not going to have any in this vehicle because there's no gas in it, but mostly for noise, vibration, and handling, quiet, wind noise, those kind of things. Uh, if we go forward, I think we'll see a different kind of foam on this car too. So this is a an open cell foam. It's, it's removed from the vehicle right here, but this is a different type of foam that's used here. What you'll also notice is this sort of brown foam that runs all the way through and you can see it in many specific places throughout the vehicle. So this foam is also an NVH foam. It's used to keep the vehicle quiet on the road. And if you come back here, you can see through this opening where the quarter used to be, our rear giga casting. So this is the first version of uh, the rear node or rear giga casting installed. And I believe we've posted some videos prior about what it takes to replace some of these. Thankfully on this Model Y, uh, neither node is damaged, but with this rear node, we've got it exposed here. If you take a peek, the front end of that node and where it's attached. So you'll see these two 14 millimeter bolts. And as I kind of trace my finger along here, this is the ultra high strength inner rocker panel and where the giga casting is attached to it. What we have on the other side is where the battery penthouse would be and the batteries installed on the vehicle. So we just wanted to take a minute and show you sort of the skeleton of the newer Model Y with front and rear nodes and what's inside of it and primarily point out in these mixed metal construction vehicles and especially in EVs as they're very quiet because there's no engine. Some of what goes into keeping these vehicles quiet, a lot of this relates to body fit and panel gap on Teslas. And people will question why they're not perfect. Well, this is a good example of why, because this is an incredibly strong vehicle and also incredibly lightweight. And at the same time, Tesla's innovating with things like bigot castings, which dramatically reduce the cost of manufacturing the vehicle. So we've talked about trade-offs many times, uh, and this is a great example of what you get when you really think outside the box. And you may have a little panel fit issue, they're, they get better every single day, but it's quite amazing what they're doing to be able to, in their design and manufacture this vehicle, to keep weight down, to keep strength up so that you have incredible range and incredible safety. So that's it for today. Thanks again for watching our YouTube channel as always. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments below and we'll answer them on our monthly podcast. Thanks again.